Mientras el ejército israelí continúa su guerra contra Hamas, el presidente ruso Vladimir Putin está presentando el conflicto como parte de una lucha global de Estados Unidos y Occidente contra el resto del mundo. Las actuales élites gobernantes de Estados Unidos y sus satélites son las principales beneficiarias de la inestabilidad global, extraen su sangre de ella. Mientras que muchas naciones de todo el mundo condenaron a Hamas después de la incursión del 7 de octubre en el sur de Israel, donde murieron más de 1.400 personas y fueron tomados cientos de rehenes, incluidos rusos. Rusia invitó a una delegación de alto nivel de Hamas a Moscú para tener reuniones. Un alto líder de Hamas dijo que el grupo daría preferencia a los cautivos de los que ellos llaman, y cito, amigos rusos. Tratamos esta solicitud de Rusia de manera más positiva y atenta que otras debido a la naturaleza de nuestra relación con Rusia. Hasta ahora no parece que se haya liberado a ningún rehén ruso. Aún así Moscú no critica a Hamas. En lugar de eso solo se dirige a Israel por los muchos palestinos muertos en la campaña aérea en curso de las FDI en Gaza. Al condenar el terrorismo estamos categóricamente en desacuerdo con que se pueda responder al terrorismo violando las normas del derecho internacional humanitario, incluido el uso indiscriminado de fuerza contra objetos donde se sabe que se encuentra la población civil. Pero durante años fue Rusia la que libró una implacable campaña de bombardeos contra zonas controladas por rebeldes opositores al presidente sirio Bashar al-Assad. Estados Unidos y varios grupos de ayuda internacional acusaron a Moscú de atacar deliberadamente áreas civiles, incluidos hospitales y mercados, matando e hiriendo a decenas de personas. El Kremlin ha negado sistemáticamente esas afirmaciones. Y la guerra de Rusia contra Ucrania continúa. Moscú vuelve a dañar estructuras civiles durante la noche en la ciudad portuaria de Odessa, hiriendo a varias personas. Sin embargo, Vladimir Putin intenta argumentar que Rusia está invadiendo Ucrania para ayudar a los palestinos. Estos son nuestros soldados y oficiales, y la opción de un hombre de verdad, de un guerrero de verdad, es tomar las armas y ponerse en fila con sus hermanos. Estar en un lugar donde se decide el destino de Rusia y del mundo entero. Esto incluye el futuro del pueblo palestino. Fred Clayton, CNN, Berlín. Russia says it successfully test launched a Bulova intercontinental ballistic missile from its new missile submarine cruiser, the Emperor Alexander III. It was part of the last stage of a test program before deciding if the cruiser will be accepted into the Navy, Russian authorities said. This comes only a few days after Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a law, previously approved by the parliament, which revoked the ratification of a global treaty banning nuclear weapons tests. The move was seen as a response to the United States' failure to ratify the treaty. The Russian Foreign Ministry said Moscow will continue to observe a ban on nuclear tests, but will act in a mirror manner if the United States conducts full-scale nuclear tests. When Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky is expressing concern over the Israel-Hamas war, he believes it's taking the focus of the battles taking place in Ukraine. There's also reports of a rift between President Zelensky and his military chief, who has said that the conflict with Russia is at a stalemate. Mr. Zelensky insists that is not the case. I don't think that this is a stalemate. They thought that they would checkmate us, but this is, didn't happen. And on the, other, on the contrary, we took the initiative in our hands. Now, Russia wants to do to, to check us. They are attacking us in the east of our country while losing thousands of people and hundreds of units, pieces of weaponry. Well, for more perspective on the connections between the Israel Hamas war and the Ukraine conflict, I'm joined by Jill Doherty, adjunct professor at Georgetown University, CNN contributor and former CNN Moscow bureau chief. Good to see you, Jill. Hey, Linda. So Russian President Putin and Israeli's Prime Minister Netanyahu appeared to have a pretty solid relationship before Russia invaded Ukraine. In recent days, we've heard Israel condemn Russia for inviting Hamas members to Moscow. Why would Russia do that? And is it readjusting its foreign policy towards Israel? You know, it's a complicated relationship because really, you know, if you look at how President Putin dealt with this, let's go back to October 7th, 
when uh, Hamas attacked Israel. And the first thing he did was not talk specifically about that, but he talked about the United States. And he said, essentially, it's the United States' fault because the United States basically has been monopolized the peace process. And what's more, monopolizing it, it also failed at the peace process. Therefore, it's the U.S. fault. And what he is trying to do, I think, Linda, is he's taking you know this relationship that began with the Middle East a long time ago during the Soviet days. And during the Soviet days, it's important to remember that the Soviet Union was on the side of liberation movements, you know, uh, anti-colonial, anti-Western liberation movements like the PLO. And that continued. That's a, that's a strain in Russians' relationships that continues to this day. But Putin, and you could actually say Gorbachev, improved the relationship with Israel. And so Vladimir Putin is trying to say, we're friends with everyone. We're friends with Israel. We're friends with the Arab states. We're friends with Hamas and with Hezbollah and trying to keep these relationships going at the same time. But I would argue that essentially what he's trying to do is exploit as much of this as he can against the West, especially against the United States. Mm. And of course, uh, Till, we saw at the United Nations Security Council a Russian resolution calling for a ceasefire and the release of the hostages, but failed to condemn Hamas. It was voted down. Just elaborate for us on Russia's position. Like, what's its strategy? Well, um, Russia, for the record, does not cons continue, uh, consider Hamas a terrorist organization. It says it's a liberation organization. So I think there, they know probably that they weren't going to get that vote. They actually don't have a lot of direct influence. But I think one of the dangers for Russia is, in a way, you could argue that they, as if they can exploit this, it could continue for a while and it might work in their favor. After all, as you began the segment, uh, Ukraine, the Ukraine war is kind of off the map publicly um, because there is so much news about the Middle East. And Putin uh, obviously benefits from that. But I would say if the conflict in the Middle East expands and it could spread to Russia, Russia has a very large Muslim population, more than 20 million people. And if it expanded, it could be a danger to Vladimir Putin himself. Mm, 